Brothers and sisters, our South Tampa Church family, we gather this morning online with fatigue, exhaustion, and tired souls, and yet with joy, hope, and gladness. You know, in the span of just two weeks, our beloved state has faced back-to-back -back hurricanes, each reminding us of our weakness and God's strength. You know, just this Wednesday, Hurricane Milton struck, bringing torrential rain, fierce winds to the Sunshine State. Ironic enough, the place known for sun has endured such darkness, but we know that the light shines brightest in the darkness. Milton came ashore as a Category 3 storm right near Siesta Key, just south of us here in Tampa. The impact was brutal, and we mourned the loss of at least nine lives, some tragically taken by tornadoes produced by the storm. As of now, over three million homes and businesses are left without power, and many of our neighbors are facing the daunting task of rebuilding their lives yet once again. We're here at our BP campus this morning, once again, without power. And I do want to let you know that uh, just like our Davis Islands campus, the BP campus, too, has taken on water in our preschool rooms as well as our first floor kids' rooms. You know, the roof of the Tampa Bay Rays Stadium, the TROP, was torn apart. And so were homes, cars, boats, along with debris of all kinds that are scattered across the landscape of South Tampa like pieces of a puzzle that no longer fits. But as devastating as the storm has been, Florida Governor DeSantis reminded all of us that this could have been a lot worse. You know, I have to say that I got pretty emotional as Sharon and Zeke and I made our drive back on Thursday, passing so many Florida power linemen and power linemen from all over the South, as well as many members of a disaster relief team. And I just want to say uh, to all of our first responders, power linemen and essential workers, God bless you. Uh, thank you for all that you guys are doing. Uh, in moments like these, um, I, I think all of us uh, at times uh, ask the questions, um, where is God in all this? And why do such things like this happen in the first place? And how are we supposed to carry on when it seems like, it feels like, wave after wave just continues to crash in over us, both literally and figuratively? Well, this morning, I invite you to take out your Bible or turn them on uh, to the Old Testament book of Psalms. And I want to find comfort and clarity in these days from the book of Psalms. So if you would turn to Psalm chapter 46, and I want to read verse 1 and verse 2. So Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth gives way, though the mountains are moved into the heart of the sea. So even when it seems that creation itself is in chaos, our God remains unshaken. Hey, STF, God is with us. God is our refuge in the storm. And let me say this, God is our strength in the aftermath. So today, we do, many of us, grieve uh, with and for friends across the state and in our city, city as they and we attempt to rebuild and many rebuild again. So let us place our trust in God, knowing that His love endures through every storm. May the Lord bless and add to the reading of His Word and the teaching of it. You know, one of my favorite verses in all of the Old Testament is found in the Old Testament major prophet Isaiah. 
Isaiah chapter 26, verse 8. Many of you have heard me uh, share this verse so many times. Isaiah 26, 8 says this. Yes, Lord, walking in the ways of your word, we wait for you. For your name and your fame are the desire of our heart. The passion inside of us is the glory of God's name. I don't know how many times... I've read that verse, I've reread that verse, I've meditated on that verse, I've reflected that verse, I've soaped that verse so many times. But I also like to read the chapters and verses before that and the chapters and verses after that. And and today I want to share with you one of those, Isaiah 33 verses 5 and 6. So if you would turn there, Isaiah 33 Five and six, here's what it says. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness. And then here's my favorite part. For he will be their stability of your times. Abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge, the fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. You know, so many of you shared with me how scared or frightened that you were this past Wednesday and Thursday morning due to the tornadoes or the hurricane itself. The the wind force was so scary. Many said that once the hurricane stopped, they they had a hard time going back to sleep because of the fear that had awakened them or their security had been threatened. You know, many Floridians have felt shaken by the flooding and the wind and the rain damage of the past 15 days. Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton have left us anxious troubled, disoriented, leaving us to wonder what to do now. Inside of your home, many of you are feeling dampened, not because of storms, but because of maybe an illness or a hardship or a financial difficulty or possibly a failed relationship or even a recent passing of a friend or of a family member. Many followers of Christ felt just as unsettled over the unprecedented transformation in the moral climate of our culture. And even this current political race have left us anxious, troubled, confused, and we wonder what to do. And as we don't know how to act, or maybe we're not sure what to say or what not to say. That's what. In the midst of these storms, I was struck by that phrase in the middle of Isaiah 33. And he, that is God, will be the stability of your times. When life feels insecure and unstable, not just in the world outside, but also inside in your own world, remember that God is ultimately in control. No matter what is happening around you or how unsteady the world might feel, God is our sure and stable foundation. When you feel the ground shift beneath your feet, as we have over these past two weeks, it is good to remember Psalm 18 verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. God is my stronghold. Jesus is the stability of our time. If Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life. You know, I want that truth to govern my heart, my focus and my life. But here's another one of those truths that I've been focusing on lately. It is this time of instability that I've been thinking about, something we say a lot, especially in the church. But God never changes. He never changes. So as we reflect on the two hurricanes that have swept through our community and our city, 
our state, and even our country. We are reminded of the power of the wind and the waves and the weakness of our own plans, but we're also reminded of the one who controls the wind and the waves and can say to them and to us, peace, be still. But in moments like this, we also remember that God calls us not to be the best in the world's eyes, but to be the right ones in his eyes. Those who are humble, teachable, servants, and ready to say yes to him, just like Isaiah did. You know, it's a bit like that 1980 U.S. hockey team. Portrayed in the movie Miracle, Coach Herb Brooks wasn't looking for the best players. They had already lost. So he was looking for the right players, the ones who were willing to come together to work hard and to follow a different plan. And with the team of unknowns, they achieved what most people thought were impossible circumstances and to achieve a gold medal. Likewise, Jesus wasn't looking for the most accomplished disciples. He was looking for those who would say yes. Yes to following him. Yes to trusting him through the storms of life. And those who would say yes to surrendering control and their life to his. We may not always understand why the storm, and in our case, storms have come. But as disciples of Jesus, our calling is to trust. Our, our, our calling is to follow, and our calling is to submit our life to His. In doing so, we not only find peace amidst the chaos, but we also experience this miraculous life transformation of grace and His power working in our lives. So, as we rebuild, rebuild from the storms, let us commit ourselves once again to say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes to Jesus in everything. Only in full obedience and surrender will we find true peace and fulfillment, no matter what storms are ahead of us. Isaiah 33, the Lord is exalted for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness, and He will be the stability of your times. I want to pray for you this morning. Father God, we thank you for each person that's listening today or in the days to come. God, we ask that they would say yes. Yes to you in salvation. Yes to you in a spirit-filled life. Yes to you in surrender of their life to yours. God, I pray for all of my brothers and sisters who are going through uh, different life storms. Uh, God, we ask that they would look to you to find peace, that they would trust you to find hope. And God, we thank you for your love. Lord, I pray your blessing and favor on our church community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to say, uh, God bless you. If you need help, Please reach out. Our Go team is going even as we speak. And we would love to be able to minister to you in your time of needs. We love you. God bless you.